It's Flashback Friday here on Rivals.com YouTube channel. So, Mike, we're talking memories. So you and I have uh, plenty of this year or today. We're looking back at the 2016 Rivals QB Challenge. What a star-studded affair in retrospect, huh? You know, we didn't – I mean, I don't know if we thought so at the time. Um, I think what – what what who was the kid that went to Miami? It was so bad. Uh, Jaron, uh, Jaron Williams. Yeah, that kind of stood out to me more than the fact that we were watching two first-round draft picks and <laughs> an SEC starter as well uh, in Emory Jones. But that kind of stood out to me a little bit more. But, yeah, looking back, pretty good, right? Two first-rounder. Yeah, what a duel they, they had, really. I mean, Mac came there wanting to win. The famous story is, you know, that the competition is throwing at nets, right? And the story is that Mac bought replica nets and practiced with his QB coach so he could win. And if you watch the video, which I'm sure is rolling as we're talking, uh, you can see that he is taking like some slower steps as he comes up to set his feet. Like those aren't necessarily real throws because he was trying to game the system. Well, he knew how to. Um, and, and you know what? The throwing in the nets thing obviously was a it was a little bit of a back and forth, as you know, on <laughs> conference calls, whether that was the proper way to run a quarterback camp. But, um, you know, I, I, it was clear at that time, you know, who had the higher ceiling. Uh, but Mac was more polished in, in, in gaming the system. He went to 85 rivals camps and knew, you know, he was a competitive kid and he, he knew what he wanted to do and how he wanted to prove that he was as good as anybody else. And and uh, he was good in that setting for sure. But, yeah, some of those drops are like... Eesh. Now, what is impressive, if you watch the deep ball, now, the hardest part of this, a lot of those QB challenge throws, it was like, come on, man. You know, it was it, a lot of them seemed easy, especially to us who didn't have to actually do them. But the one throw that kind of separated the men from the boys was the deep toss into the corner of the end zone, the, the long toss. I think it was like 40, 50 yards. And you'd see almost every person leave it short. And there's a sequence where Mac hits one and then takes the next snap and hits another. And that's where you kind of realize, like, man, does this kid have that type of arm? Because you saw plenty of guys who were ranked higher than him or were more highly regarded who couldn't make that throw. Now – Trevor could always make that throw. He could that, no problem. But that was kind of eye-opening for me if you look back on it, some of the plays that Mac was able to make, some of the throws. And they did throw to some some receivers and stuff like that uh, as it was a little bit of a camp aspect. But you you watched that and you saw Trevor. I mean, that was, a, that was one of your first or second times seeing him in person. And he was eye-opening. But I think Mac really kind of set the tone as well. Yeah, and – you know, there's this false narrative that Mac Jones was a three star and, and, you know, he went to Alabama as an afterthought and all this other stuff. And, you know, remember his early commitment to um, to Kentucky and, and all the schools that came after him after that. Um, he, you know, he was always a four star. You, you were the guy who ranked him initially. And, you know, this was a talented kid. Um, he looked skinny. He didn't look impressive. You know, if there was a bus to get off of at a quarterback challenge <laughs> or rivals camp, you'd look at him and be like, I don't know. Um, but he always had, you know, the touch, the, the accuracy, but that competitive drive that we got to see, you know, when Mac was talking crap about everybody else all the time behind the scenes and, and just how much he wanted to win things. Um, I didn't think it would pan out for him well, especially after what three years at Alabama. Uh, but that determination, this just shows you don't jump in the transfer portal the first second you get. Maybe stay where you are. Uh, believe in yourself. And he certainly bet on Mac Jones and won. Yeah, he really shot up between his sophomore and junior years. A lot of people don't talk about that. I mean, he developed more physically. He still wasn't, you know, anything to write home about, like you said, from the get off the bus standpoint but uh anyway great fun back there in 2016 so much fun hanging out with mac what a character and uh now he's an nfl rookie starting quarterback can you believe it i can't I, you know and two nice kids really too you know as well both of them could have turned into absolute jerks you know um especially trevor and they you know 
they they turn out to be really really good kids. So they're kind of kids you want to root for at the NFL level as well. So um, you know, good memories of those guys. Uh, Mac at eighty five camps and Trevor, you know, hauling his butt to Indianapolis at the end with the five star when he had no reason to. Um, just shows his competitive nature. Yeah, also shows uh, my recruiting skills because uh, somebody was- taking that credit out there. I don't know if you know who that person is, but uh, you may want to, uh, you know, address them on Twitter. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> it could be any number of people, but uh, anyway, my, my DMs tell a different story. I got receipts. If anybody wants yeah, to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, that's Flashback Friday. I will be back next week, uh, hopefully doing another one, maybe with Mike, maybe somebody else. So thanks a lot for joining, Mike. See ya.